How's UPS going to operate? Yeah, there's about 300 million people uh, about to have a rude awakening, huh? Well, there's, that's, that's the bad, I mean, that's the downside. Uh, we can prevent a lot of it uh, by having our own food and uh, living the preparedness lifestyle. Always live as if tomorrow there will be no more so that you can go on as if nothing happened. Preparedness means being able to have continuity with your life as if nothing happened. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, you got pretty much. I mean, so what that means is I gave people, I said, you've got to change your paradigm, paradigms. You've got to change the way you think about the future. And, and so I give them three things, uh, three paradigm shifts to make. <clears throat> the first one is that you've got to have a place where you can bloom where you're planted. In other words, you need a place that's going to give you sanctity and security. The first and most, what, what would you say, and this is unfair to ask you, I've spent 40 years thinking about it, but what do you think is the most important part of your preps? After, after you get your spiritual part, and spiritual means that you've decided within you that it's an important thing to do, and so therefore you're committed to it. And if you have a spiritual commitment, I'm not talking religion. Religion is something else. Religion is a set of mores, morals, by which we live that makes us better people. But spirituality is something we all care about. He says, I want to stay alive. I want to treat my man, and my, my fellow man I- as well as I can. I want to live by the golden rule, the platinum rule, and the diamond rule. I'm going to go over those later. <laughs> but I want to live by rules that will help me be, treat other people fairly and that will guarantee that other people treat me fairly. So if you have those rules, that's, that's spirituality. But what's the most important physical thing you have to have, you think? Uh, the most important physical thing? Yeah, yeah. After that, people always start yelling, well, I want a gun, or I want water, or I want food, or, but it's not the, that. What is it? The most important physical thing to me is is being in shape. Uh, for one, people, everyone, they always talk about building a bug-out bag, but they have no idea how heavy that bug-out bag is. Like, if you have to walk a couple hundred miles, you know what that's going to do to your feet? Uh, they're not ready for it. They don't take into consideration these things. So what, what I suggest is be, have a – put – uh, workout weights in your bug out bag and take your bug out bag with you and go for a walk every morning yeah. or a jog with that bug out bag on. 300 to... million people bugging out. Excuse me? Is that even reasonable? Uh, I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, does everybody have to jump up? Okay, everybody in Texas goes to New York, everybody in New York goes to Florida, everybody in Florida goes to Kansas, everybody in Kansas goes to Virginia. Are, are you kidding me? <laughs> Where are you going to bug? Everybody can't come to Texas. There's not enough to go around. I mean, there's not enough for everybody. Well, let's face it. Uh, in, in, half, in the short more than term, half the people are going to die. A lot of the people are going to die. The people that yeah. do want to survive, the people who ha- want to okay. survive, have the will to survive, um, you know, the, the herd is going to be thinned out. And the people that are left are going to be, you know, the preppers and the people who want to survive and who have knowledge and who have been preparing. And uh, the other well, people... It's going to be the people who have shelter. Shelter is the most important thing after spirituality, which means education, train yourself, prepare yourself physically, mentally, morally, etc. Then you've got to have shelter. Why do you need a shelter? Because it's where you're going to put your preps. It's the only safety and security you have, whether the lights work or not, whether the water runs or not. A shelter provides you what? Safety, security, out of the cold, out of the rain, out of the hot heat, and you need a shelter. And in the shelter, you'll have a place where you, uh, you know, you'll still have some of the rudiments home. You have a, at least you have a toilet. You may have to carry water to flush it. If you live in the city, it's going to be rough if, if the sewage system breaks down because where does it go? If you live on the top floor, you're okay. If you I think live below the top floor, you're in what? London right now with the flooding, right? They're, they're starting to get some of that problem in London. Oh, yeah. I mean, everywhere there's flooding or freezing. A lot of times you have problems when these things freeze. These sewers will freeze when you have weather like we're having. A Titan is teaching us a great lesson. I mean, after, after a really rough winter, we're having a rough spring, for heaven's sake. So all I'm saying is you have to have shelter because the shelter is the place you're going you're to plant yourself and you're going to bloom there. 
and that's the first priority or the first paradigm that you have to think that mine not eighty percent of us live in an urban environment. Where are we gonna go? If you leave a minute too late, you're dead meat. If you leave a week too early, you may you know, you use up your preps. <laughs> See it's a very delicate balance and I don't think many people will get it right. Yeah, and because the pro there's the no problem. warning. <laughs> There is no warning, very little warning, and, and the problem is a lot of people, you know, it takes a lot of money uh, to really get in, into prepping, and a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck, and they can't afford to relocate or even stock up on extra food, so... Um, but they can. They can. You did it by moving, but you can do it, but you have to make the commitment, and that's the second one. Uh, the second so, thing is, of course, that you're going to turn your home into a convenience store. Your home has become a place that has all the stuff that you like, that you will eat, that will sustain you, and you do it wisely. That's more difficult. But you're going to stock your shelter with stuff that will keep you alive, that will give you a long-term life, uh, and you're supposed to do it, of course, quietly without bragging about it, and you do it within the community. That community can be extended family. It can be your neighbors. It can be the guys at work. It could be the guys at church or people down at the union hall, whatever. You find some yeah. people who will, who will help because they will have some of the things that you can use as a community. For example, not everybody needs a big hand grinder or a small hand grinder for wheat and oats and corn and whatever else you want to turn into flour or meal. So, uh, And then somebody might be able to have Somebody will make a contribution, not a contribution, but will be able to contribute a car that among them all, even when it's rationed, they'll be able to get enough gas that they can have one vehicle to share or a truck or something like that. And at, at infinitum, all, all, at infinitum, <laughs> to infinity is the other way to think, at infinitum. You'd be able, each of you would have an assigned duty or assigned product you might all go together to buy something that will help everybody, but nobody will use all the time. So having, having with you then uh, a, that personal convenience store means you have the food, you have the supplies, uh, you have the accoutrements that you need to make meals. That takes some planning. And uh, did I say that you, can't, you, have to, to, you have to plan to prepare? And then when you start your preparedness, you have to start making selection. It takes a commitment, and that commitment does require money. It requires a lot of money. Life, by the way, requires a lot of money. Have you noticed? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so, so all you do, though, is shift the commitment to meet the goal. People who, uh, let me just say it this way, if you smoke and drink and drug and go out dancing on Saturday night or, 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 or have a big card that you don't need, and, and told, told yourself that every time a new model comes out, you've got to have it, uh, those things are going to have to go away if you don't have enough money to buy your food. But you need to get food. I think food will be the, oh, what shall we call it, the economy of the future. It, it will be the barter. Uh, if you have food, gold will be worth nothing. You can't eat gold. And by the way, when they come in with a $2,000 $20 gold piece and you've got $20 worth of food and you got an extra, you can make 2000 bucks because, you see, they can't eat the gold, no matter what it's worth. And you can't plan it and get more. It has no yeah. nourishment. It'll only buy stuff. So gold only has a value as the dollar goes down. Gold goes up. Hello? It went that up means, a lot today. Well, so what? Uh the dollar must have gone down a lot. But even so, with that gold, if, I, if, you make, if you buy gold at $2 a day and sell it for $4 tomorrow, take the 4 bucks and go buy some food. Absolutely. Because take your, you buy your food with your profits because food will be more valuable than gold. And people talk about how, uh, how valuable gold will be. That, that's true. It, if everything else stays the same, but nothing else stays the same. You ever notice that food keeps going up week after week after week? Not oh, everything yeah. at once. Not it's everything horrendous. At once. Yeah, 
when you look at last year and this year, we didn't get pay increases to match the cost of grocery increases. You know, I feel bad because there's a lot of hardworking people out there, and uh, the people in front of them get food stamps, and they're filling up their grocery cart. Meanwhile, the people in back well, have just busted their are. butts. Have Unfortunately, just busted. very few people who are using food stamps for food are putting any of it away. They may be getting food, but they're using food to trade for other things. Or now you can use your food stamps to buy cigarettes and alcohol and things you didn't used to be able to buy when I worked in the grocery business. Oh, that's you just You can buy wrong. cigarettes and beer. Oh, I want to talk things. to you for a minute about... Let me finish uh, the third paragraph. There's a third one. I've given you two. I get bloom where you're planted. In other words, plant yourself into a shelter that you can defend, so to speak. I don't mean with guns, but you can defend it against the weather, etc. And then you're going to have a grocery store, what I call it, an in-home convenience store, that has all the stuff that you will aggregate the stuff that your family will eat. And I'm going to give you another rule you need. This is a side rule. <laughs> this is sub-rule number one. Never buy anything that's not a first priority for you. I hear people say, I'm going to buy me some liquor. I'm going to buy me some snuff. I'm going to buy me some cigarettes and cigars because they'll be in short supply and I can get a lot of money for them. Yeah, in a normal world, just like drugs, uh, you know, People, men and women, are already selling their bodies for drugs, and, and it's a pretty good economy, considering. <laughs> but you see, think what will happen to our morals when the only way you can get a food is to sell your body. Any kind of food. Just a meal. Or a smoke. Or a drink. Or a shot. Or whatever. So, uh, I, I sound terrible, and I hope I make people think... They don't have to like me, but they should listen because I've been there. I was in Europe when things went tough. Uh, So anyway, the third paradigm is that now that you have your shelter and you're stocking your shelter with food, you have to be able to camp out within the walls of your shelter. Whether there's lights, gas, heat, or cool, refrigeration or not, that place has to be somewhere you can stay safely and scrunch yourself in it and extend your life with the, with the products that you put there for yourself. That's going to be difficult to do. And what you want to do is encourage as many people to do it as possible. I don't want everybody coming. I've been buying food since 1974 and putting it aside. Yes, I still have some food I bought in 1974. I have two or three cans of uh, uh, Mountain House, what do you call that? The uh, Oregon Freeze Ride Food, it was called, and they just started their retail division about that time. And I bought some government pork chops, freeze dried pork chops, about six cans. I think they were about $20 a can. They're somewhere around $65 a can now, if you can get them. But they only have them once in a while because the military takes them all. But I, every once in a while, I'll open a can of freeze-dried steaks, you rehydrate them with cool water, and you can literally grill them. Now, can you imagine that? I've had them since 1974. Wow. Now, all the nutrients are still there and stuff, too? Absolutely, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So, So can you see, I think totally differently than most people about this, because I've, I've done this for 40 years. It's not something I decided last week would be fun to do because everybody's doing I can't find a job. I mean, this has been job one for me for 40 years. And I try to tell people, I'm not, you know, I'll walk in the walls, you know, saying, hey, uh, uh, you know, the sky's falling, the sky's I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that just because you're a parent, you have responsibility for your household. A father is responsible. He, when they stood before that preacher or the county judge or whoever married them, or whenever they agreed to get, get together, they didn't get married officially. There's a commitment that they'll take care of their offspring. Animals do it. Why can't humans? And so we have a responsibility to look out for our families. You cannot count on the federal government to do that. You can't. Yeah. So... So th- there's a secret. Now, those are my, I have rules of three. I live my whole life on rules of three, and that's the three basic ones to get yourself started in preparedness. 
Uh, so, ask 